Hey everyone, Steve Wantrobe with Collider, and I am thrilled to be talking to the filmmakers behind Dungeons and Dragons. Gentlemen, you guys know I'm a big fan of all of your work, and I think the the footage, the trailer, I don't I don't think it was a, it was a trailer. It was. Yeah, yeah. The, the trailer looks really, really fun. And I think, like, is that the movie? Is it just like a really fun ride? It is absolutely a ride, if rides also made you cry, because <laughs> there's some of that. Some there's some of that, too. Cry. Yeah. No, it's, you know what? We tried to capture the spirit of what it is to play a D&D game, which is life and death stakes one minute, and then you're laughing your heads off the next. And that's what this movie hopefully is. And to me, like, it all comes down to tone, right? And I think the tone that you want to hit is that thing where you're just like, you're having this fun, fun, fun time, and you're getting hit in the heart all the time over and over again, and you see stuff you've never seen before. And I, that's what these guys do so well. I mean, it goes back to me having worked with them on Spider-Man Homecoming and, and reading the first thing I ever read of theirs was just this thing that kind of mashed up genres and was hilarious and heartfelt and adventurous and everything else. And knowing that they had that in them and, and being so thankful to be on this journey with them here to bring this totally huge new world to life, it's, like, it's, it's damn exciting. So, I mean, I hypothetically have heard you've test screened the movie, hypothetically. What did you learn? I think you have. Uh, what did you learn from those screenings? Where are you in the editing room? Uh, we're basically locked in terms of the edit. We still have, you know, a lot of VFX work coming in, uh, a lot of music that we need to conform and stuff. But uh, beyond that, I think the thing that we learned the most from our test screenings was that it, it really appealed not just to D&D &D fans. People that had no idea what they were watching when they were going into the test screening actually were engaged. And, and they didn't think that they would be because it's a D&D &D movie and it's got a st uh, not necessarily a stigma, but it has a lot of baggage attached to it in terms of like what people expect out of it. And I think that was like a pleasant surprise for a lot of people. Uh, yeah, and, and I mean, especially t women are loving it, too, which, you know, D&D &D is not necessarily thought of as, but in fact it is, and I think if handled right, it, sh it should be, because it's all about characters, it's all about the people feeling real and relatable. We tried to tell the story of some people who are not superheroes by any means. They kind of suck at a lot of things, but they're great at other things, and so how do you make those skills come to the fore? How do you tell a story where they all get to kind of level up over the movie? I saw someone on Twitter say this, and I was thinking the same thing. Looking at the footage, it almost looks like like I don't want to like a Guardians of the Galaxy meets D and D in terms of like the fun characters. Is that accurate or is Let's that? Let's ask the producer. I okay. mean, look to to me the thing the thing about these kind of movies is, I I come from like a background where like I've worked at Marvel for a really long time, but I didn't grow up inherently as like the biggest fan of all that Marvel stuff. And one of the things that I think I was particularly good at in that era of my life was going, how do we make this thing that could be really nerdy and like really like, like just for this one particular audience, something that everyone can kind of relate to. And that was kind of the challenge with the Guardians was like space movies, like make a space movie that like my grandmother can love. And and I think here it's like make a fantasy movie that my grandmother can love, but also make it so that the fantasy people love the fantasy movie. And it's 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 that like walking that line and threading that needle. I think that's what James Gunn did really successfully with Guardians. And I think that's what we're hopefully, I really feel like we're trying to do here is like walk that line yeah, and make it so it's 100% serious and 100% has real stakes mm -hmm. and real, you know, emotion, but also that you're having a damn good time. We'll know more when we screen it for his grandmother. It's coming up. <laughs> so obviously, any Dungeons and Dragons movie has dragons, and I'm very curious. Uh, are there multiple dragons? What can you say about how many dragons are in the movie? I can say that there are multiple dragons in the movie. I can't say specifically who or what they are, uh, but they are very unique in their own way, and there are depictions of these dragons that have not been seen before on screen. I can say that. I think. Talk a little bit about designing the dragons because that's a that's a huge thing, and obviously there's many versions. If you look at any D and D cover, you can see all these different dragons. How much did you look at that material and say we have to give the fans of D and D something that looks like that? And how much we sort of like we just have to do the dragons that's best for the movie? That what you just said, right? It was like subverting people's expectations to a certain degree of like things that they haven't seen in in dragons, but also giving them like a more traditional look at like the dragons that is from you know their 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 fantasy books. So it's it's finding that balance, and that's sort of typical of how we approach 
every aspect of this movie because there's a lot of lore. There's a lot of things that sort of, you know, you expect it to be. Um, and we work closely with the Wizards of the Coast to make sure that we were kind of within the right zone of what it needed to be for the fans to appreciate it and, and not be thrown by it. But ultimately, we also had to make it our own and make it work for this movie. And so, well, you know. Yeah, and that was one of the things I think, like, we worked really close with this uh, uh, art director, super senior guy at, at Watsy named Jeremy Jarvis. And, and his thing was always like, it's not about accuracy, it's about authenticity. And it was like about capturing the vibe of, say, a specific kind of dragon and capturing what makes those dragons tick for fans and for the lore. And, and but also understanding that, like, it's a campaign. Everything is different. Every time you stumble into a different, you know, dragon's den, it's going to be a little bit different than the last time. And, and it can be different. It can be unexpected. And so finding that way to walk that line. And I think we had really incredible artists working and we had really incredible support from Watsi. And I think that together with a great script that called for specific needs for the dragons made it like kind of unique and, and, and kind of special. Uh, you guys obviously settled on a title. Was it almost something else? How close did it, was it almost Dungeons and Dragons without, you know, honor? Like, how did you decide on it? Yeah, I mean, it, it was a long, it was a long process uh, deciding on that because, you know, it's it's representative of this much bigger, you know, brand. And I think that was that was what the kind of challenge was was how are we going to depict this movie? At first, when we wrote it, we just called it Dungeons and Dragons, but. Um, there was rightfully like the concern that it doesn't f necessarily uh, emphasize the, the scope of Dungeons and Dragons. The fact that Dungeons and Dragons isn't just this story. This is just one of many stories that kind of lived in the world. And that's kind of where our title landed. Was it almost something else? It was almost a couple things, but it wasn't really because no one really felt that they captured it, right? Like there's a moment in that process when you're talking to marketing, you're talking to brand, you're looking at the screenplay, you're looking at the movie you're making and you go, oh, it could be this. And then no one's really that yeah, excited there were, there about it. titles thrown out that felt more like marketing things than the spirit of the movie. And, so and, and then the this kind of came along and we were all like, yeah, that kind of captures who these who this team is, you know? And it kind of says something about this movie in particular and not just like generic, generic. And, and, and so it was like that, that's the, line to walk there is to make sure you find the thing that captures the soul of the film and I think it does I think it's oh, a yeah. nice title it's a very true kind of subtitle yeah. to what the movie is about so I've been waiting for a kick-ass Dungeons and Dragons movie since I was a kid I'm, I'm gonna be really honest about this obviously the studio everyone involved this is potentially a really big franchise and a world that can be explored when you guys were first talking to the studio about doing this and getting the green light how much are they saying to you okay this is great but we want to make sure you have like three ideas for other things like how much are they thinking about the world and how much is it sort of like let's just make this one movie there was no pressure put on us to think in terms of a cinematic universe um, we obviously wanted to create characters and an environment that could grow and that had the potential for more films, um, but that wasn't at all in the forefront of our approach to this. Yeah. And, and by the way, that's a testament to the studios because I think sometimes the studios put the cart before the horse and try to create these cinematic universe, universes before the first movie even comes out. And so I think they were smart and savvy enough to know that the first one's got to work before you even dive into the others. That said, I think it's a really good jumping off point for a lot of other potential movies to come after it. I mean, ha having come like through the the world that I grew up in and, and like, it's like, we never thought about sequels on that first round of movies. Like it was just about make this movie good, make this movie good, make this movie good. Okay, now we gotta make an Avengers movie that ties it all together, how do we do that, oh my God. And, but the, the journey to that wasn't like, we gotta start planning, right? We, it's, it's, it has to be that you make something great in its own merit. And so I was really like adamant, like, let's not be thinking ahead whenever that would come up from, you know, if someone would say something about the future, I'd be like, we, it's, it's this, this is the future. This movie being good is the future. So I'm curious, what can you say about which characters, like character classes, types, what can you reveal about what's in the movie? Well, we had to, we, we made sure that we had as as much of a diverse kind of group of characters in terms of their in terms of their race and class 
and uh, I think we really covered as as many as we possibly could without having even more characters, you know, in our in our ensemble. So we have a we have a big group of people. They all kind of represent a very specific thing that I think a lot of uh, players can sort of see themselves in. But also, it's not so kind of bogged down with the proper nouns that people that aren't familiar with the with the game are going to be alienated. You got Led Zeppelin in the uh, trailer. A, how much did that cost? <laughs> and B, how much did that cost? And C, was it always going to be Led Zeppelin? Was this like the dream? What happens if they said no? Well, that is a funny question. We can't not tell you how much it costs because I'm not even quite sure. I know it was very complicated and uh, it happened at the very last minute. Um, so we were uh, definitely on a high wire without a net for a second. Um, and I am so thankful that they saw it and... Uh, and said yes, because I think it really is additive and cool and kicks a lot of ass. And I think it kind of broadens things in a way that you're like, heck yeah, you know? And so it was, it was, a, it was definitely a complicated process for the music I, department. I will say that um, when a studio is willing to spend what it costs to get Led Zeppelin, it's a good sign for their faith in the movie. And Zeppelin, by the way, is so perfect for Dungeons and Dragons, especially since like Zeppelin in its heyday was when Dungeons and Dragons kind of came to be. So there is this real crossover that I think is is juicy and still feels kind of contemporary and different from uh, other fantasy fantasy films that you'd see. So it, it was kind of it, it it was a perfect combination, I think. Yeah, I'm very thankful that they that they dove in with us on this. It's yeah. really it's really cool. Oh, I watched the trailer twice and I'm like this uh, uh, you should be thanking your marketing team because it's a fantastic trailer and the thing that people don't realize is this early out you don't have a lot of VFX shots to work with. You know what I mean? Or I guess you were finishing shots for this trailer. Yeah. yeah. We yeah, were we were pushing very very much to get these yeah. done. I got to stop. I'm just going to say sincerely, I really can't wait to see the movie, which I know will be finished about March 1st with, <laughs> with, with VFX. But really, it looks fantastic. And I wish you guys nothing but the best. And thank you so much for coming through. Thank, thank you. Thank you, yeah, you as always. Appreciate man. It. Wait for you Big to see fan it. of yours.